Hi, I'm Morris Milani from Alaska Arms LLC. Today I'm going to demonstrate installing a set of the quick detachable scope rings that fit the CZ-550 on a scope and then installing that scope on a rifle and getting that all lined up and properly installed. Now I'm going to review the installation steps. Put the rear ring on. You want to make sure the cam plate is facing you and that has the cam cutouts in it. I'm just going to hold that in place. It's got the little cam cutouts, that's where the screws and everything go in the bottom half of the ring. You know, the, rear, the rear objective lens is of course going to be facing on, on your left hand side. And take the longer of the set the screws here, the gun screws, they're 648 low head cap screws, drop those in there. We're just going to tighten the lower set of these by the way. These are 5 sixteenths long. The screws that go up top they're the same thread but they're only a quarter of an inch long and that way they don't stick out past the top of the the bosses on the upper, upper side of the ring there and, and if, if you see if you do it if you assemble them backwards no big deal just take them apart hunt down the screws where they go and and swap them out now it's recommended that you torque these with to 20 inch pounds so that's what I'm doing right now I've got the torque driver set and there's 20 inch pounds once again, these are low head cap screws. The, the cutout in here is very shallow for the hex key. And so make sure your key is seated in that, that pocket. You don't have a lot of room. Now you see the rings are, there's plenty of play on the scope tube. Don't worry about that. That allows you to adjust it once you get it on your rifle. But this is what you need. The top set of screws, I just put them in there. I do not tighten them all the way. Just screw them down a little bit. And in the event that you don't have a torque driver, you can still install these and get them, do a good solid installation, keep the key seated, that's critical, and pull them up good and snug. Good and snug is not destructive and wait till things strip and break. Good and snug is simply that, good and snug. A torque driver is really going to give you the best results in the long run. Okay, now we've torqued these screws on the bottom. These are just in place, they're not tight. You can see the ring slides down. The hole in the ring is precision machine on a CNC machine. They're round. They're not going to scuff up your, your scope ring. You can adjust them where you need to put them. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it sliding. There's plenty of an adjustment in there for smaller diameter sc scope tubes. When I say smaller diameter, a few thousand smaller, it'll easily accommodate that. And now I'm going to drop the cam springs, cam plate springs in the pocket of the lower screws. Those screws are actually set down a little bit. And so there's a pocket there for the cam um, springs. I'm going to set the cam plate on here and then we've got the lever and the cam screw. Fits in there. Kind of a difficult angle to peek at it, but there we go. Now we're good to go. Now you just want to get these in place. You don't want to tighten this down yet because you actually adjust this on the gun. So resist the temptation to run that down tight because later on the installation when you go to put it on the rifle it'll be closed too far and you'll wonder what's wrong with it. Nothing's wrong with it. You just tighten. You, you have the cam plate out of adjustment. You've adjusted it too tight. So right now we're going to leave it loose. And by the way that up position that's the off position to remove it and that's locked. You can lock it either there or this is also locked. So you can lock it at 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock is, is in the lock position and, and straight up is unlocked. You really can't go down with them because they're too close to your stock and your receiver. So I'm going to follow these same steps and install the front ring. You'll notice that I have the recoil lug. That's the rear ring that goes in the rear bridge. So that's there. I'm not really worried where it is on the scope body because once we get it on the rifle we're going to line the crosshairs and take care of that. So it's, it's right now it's not an issue. The issue is getting them on, on the scope tube in the right location. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now I've installed the front ring on the scope. Now I'm ready to set it on the receiver, get the rings aligned where they need to be, and make some further adjustments. First thing I do is I want to lay the front ring. It's approximately in the center of this, of this bridge. The rear ring has a little recoil shoulder on the cam plate and that goes in the 
pocket that's on the rear bridge so we want to get that in position. This lever once again locks in either this position or this position whatever your preference is so you're not stuck either way. Okay so I want to put that in that rear little recoil detent. I want to tighten that up put that in the lock position. This front ring I want to get that about centered on there not too far forward just about in the middle of the bridge that's good and now I'm ready to take my screwdriver or torque driver and I'm going to run this down. I'm going to run this cam screw down. Now it's a common common problem here. This has a lock screw on the back side. The 1032 lock screw, the set screw. Make sure that's backed off until you get that cam screw adjusted and then what that lock screw does is it keeps that cam screw from ratcheting as you remove and reinstall your rings. So it's there for a purpose but don't, don't let it get in your way. If you're trying to run that in there and it's a little tight, there's your problem. Okay, so I'm going to snug that up now. I feel that's about where I want it. And now I'm going to go up to the front front ring and I'm going to snug that up nice and snug and tighten up the lock screw. And we're going to see how that feels. I just pulled it nice and snug. I didn't get stupid but I didn't get lazy with it either. Uh, the rear one, I, I think I'd like that a little tighter. The front one, that's, that's a good snug feel. Your knuckles turn a little white when you're moving it. You got it about right. Um, they, they shouldn't be loose because you don't want them to ever loosen in the field and to repeat they cannot be loose. So I'm leave that in the lock position because I think I want to take that a little tighter. Just uh, engage the screwdriver. And once again this is a, a Brownells bit. It's a 300-3. You can buy it from Brownells. Any quality gunsmithing screwdriver set will have a thin blade screwdriver. Any quality firearms you don't want a big sloppy looking coin slot up there to tighten your scope rings with. It's not the quality that you really want to see. Um, okay, that's where I want it, the feel I want on the back one. Here's the front one. Now you'll notice I can still adjust my scope and that's what you're going to do. Now you're going to get your eye relief. You're going to line up your crosshairs the way you want them. Shoulder your stock. Get that where you want it. Exactly where you want it, where you're comfortable with it. And now here's the next step. You're going to come back. Now you can use the hex key make sure the hex key is fully seated in this, this the uh, gun screw up there, the 648. It's a low head cap screw. It's a hex key slot in there. It's a socket head screw. That has This has to be seated in it fully. So now that everything's aligned, we're going to take our Torx driver and we're going to give it our 20 pounds of torque, 20 inch pounds of torque, excuse me, 20, whew, 20 foot pounds would be kind of frightening. front one gets our 20 inch pounds. And now you're ready to go shoot it. One quick note, in order to get it to repeat every time, and I guarantee it will come to a perfect zero, when you install the rings, slide them forward and that recoil lug has to engage in the front of that recoil shoulder push it forward because when you fire the gun the scope wants to sit here the rifle wants to recoil back and that's where it ends up so send it there. If you need any spare parts they're available at our website alaskaarmsllc.com if you have any questions you can contact me through the website I'll gladly walk you through the installation procedures give any ideas little pointers you might want to have and help you get this set up right properly installed these will return to zero every single time you can use multiple scopes and every time you swap out a scope or remove and replace your scope, you're coming back to zero. Allows you to travel with a spare scope. Allows you to hunt with more than one scope. Different hunting conditions require different optics. and allows you to do that, especially if you're traveling to Africa. You can get a lot more use out of one rifle by being able to change out your optics. Now we're ready to install our scope and adjust the rings and, and get that whole package set up. Before we do that, safety is always paramount. We want to make sure, number one, the gun's empty. And, and to do that, Open the bolt, put your little finger up in the chamber. These chambers are huge. This is a 416 Rigby, but anything you can feel that case. The worst thing you want to do is you have a key around in the chamber because you short cycled it. You close it, bam, you got a loaded gun, you think it's unloaded. Never trust it. Or better yet, you can just remove the bolt, set it on your bench. Be safe with this.